This is recording. Yep. All right, let's do the clap. Oh, whoa, whoa, did you see that? There it goes. Okay. Sorry. Okay, ready? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Thursday. I'm Noel Ruiz, a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me is Pedro. Sorry. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, a creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to bring you 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. This is a show where we combine 3D printing with DIY electronics to make crazy projects that go like this. Every week, we have an awesome assortment of segments. Let's go ahead and start us off, Noel. OK, hold on, folks. It's, it's you know, we're getting there. Every week we start off with what are you prototyping? That's when we take a look at some of the behind the scenes for some future projects. We're That's right. On. Future, future, but now. <laughs> uh, layer by layer, we'll link into that somehow. Yeah, we'll go over some of the CAD techniques that we're, um, you know, going to yep. share. The <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! We're gonna go do three D news after that segment, after said segment. That's right. Every week we scour the net for some interesting three D stories to bring to you guys. All right. And then we'll do some shop talk. What's shop talk? Uh, this week's shop talk is actually featuring a lot of the makes that you guys have been oh, yeah. uh, 3D printing. This week oh, it's yeah. the Pie Girl. Take okay. a look at some awesome builds Alrighty. from the community. And then we'll end the show off with Q&A where we answer your YouTube questions. That's right. Every week you guys got questions and we got some answers for you. All right. Let's start the show. Pay some bills. That's right. This week's discount code is prototype. Use prototype during checkout. Get 10% off of your order of uh, printers, filament, and of course electronics to bring your project to life. Speaking of prototypes, we got a lot of prototypes this week. Pedro, I'm really excited about this one you got. This is so cool, so mini and so cute. Tell us about your, your prototype. Yeah, so Lamar really wanted a little tiny libretto pie, so... What's the libretto? So it was a little... 1990s something? Yeah, it was a little tiny little uh, like netbook computer back in the day. Uh, she had she one, she really loved it, and... Um, we made a little Raspberry Pi sort of um, little laptop. Oh my God, it closes. So this thing is so cool. It's completely portable, right? Yeah, so we got a 200 milliamp battery in here. And How's we it have it, a uh, PowerBoost 1000C that's providing power to the Raspberry Pi 2. So we have a nice little fast little computer in here. We have the speakers, uh, the little tiny um, ones that we're using in the- uh, In the Pi Girl, yeah. Pi Girl. Everyone loves these speakers. Yeah, we got our ultra teeny tiny 2.5 watt amp oh, yeah. uh, class D amplifier. So a nice little guy in there. And of course, all the ports come up here. The keyboard that we had in the shop also just snaps onto there. And you can sort of turn this into a wearable too, if we have like a little, you know, turn this it's into like a little portable, clutch. Yeah. Yeah, so Pi 2 is awesome. Put you got the necklace. little Wi-Fi dongle on there. You have access to all your ports here. And um, you control AstroPrint on here, and you can also, it's a uh, resistive touch screen too. Oh man. So, so you, you can have, just touch around if you yeah. want. And then type any uh, the terminal mm -hmm. stuff. Nice you little need. typing here. Okay. And of course, the speakers um, are uh, pretty loud, so yeah. you can play like it's uh, trying you to load right SoundCloud. Now, folks. There it goes. Yeah, so you can check out SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yes, get Please all the music we use on all the projects. <laughs> but awesome little. Um, a uh, little portable laptop. Yeah, it's very usable. I mean, um, it reminds me of the the, t the Pi Touch project that I made a couple weeks ago, or a couple, a couple, a couple months ago. ago yeah. This is so much better because it's for the for the Pi Two. We actually have a question that we'll talk about it. We we'll dive a little bit more into it, but a uh, very very cool project. Um, when's it when's it coming out? Uh, I think a week or two. A week um, or two. Yeah, we just finished doing all the hero shots. I think, and I think assembly shots for it. So okay, so soon. it's in it's in the works. It's pretty much ready to go. We just got to yeah, uh, guide. We absolutely love this. Uh, we're using it as our Astro Pie. Yeah. Um, you can just sort of walk around with this, sort of get all your stuff done. Yeah. And you can charge it with the power boost. So. Yeah, so you can charge it. The, um, okay, and char okay. chargeable back here. And, Very uh, cool. What else can we say about it? It's pretty <laughs> damn cool little it's a, portable it's a Raspberry cool. Pi. Very, very cute one, too. Yeah, it's super cute. Um, um, yeah, definitely check this out when uh, we release this. Okay. Another uh, prototype uh, we're working on is this tiny little GoPro mount. Yeah, show or, us up here close. Like, this is very. It, of course, it looks really simple, but it does what it does is it does like you know uh, 
very valuable stuff to, to your project. Yeah, so you guys have been seeing us play with the Hubson um, 107C. Uh, we got that so we can learn how to fly without using any GPS or anything like that. So we upgraded to the SEMA X8C, which can um, hold a GoPro. So the little camera that it comes with did not have you know, the attachment. So just whipped one up, attached this guy, did, went for a little test drive. You can see the video here. Okay. And we were actually uh, super surprised on how stable this little, you know, this is a DJI clone. Um, but instead hey, of, you know, costing what, like 800 bucks, this is a hundred dollar little, you know, drone. So it's of course, very affordable. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can get into AP, um, with the low budget. Um, if you already have a GoPro, it makes sense to like try yeah, and get you can into just a see how yeah? stable this was. And the, if you can see the legs, I didn't, um, I, I didn't angle this right. Oh, the legs Look at how jiggling. this thing was in the wind. It was going all over the place like oh, yeah. that. I didn't think the video was going to come out, you know, yeah, I thought super it was smooth at all. Yeah. Um, so I shot at 100, frame, uh, at 100 frames, which is why the aspect ratio is a little oh, off. Oh, it's uh, okay. Hero plus three, you can only shoot, I uh, think, at 96. Um, mm. uh, the resolution at 96 by Oh, that's what this GoPro is, a Hero 3. Yeah, okay. so There's because I, I thought we were going to have to slow it down, so I shot at 100 mm -hmm. frames. But, man, we could just shoot at you know 60 frames at 1080. Is that Gavin in the pool? Yeah, yeah, there's Gavin playing the in the pool. <laughs> He's like bored of the drones now. He's like, ah, oh, I see those every day. Oh, uh, right. Imagine being a kid like that. You see, yeah. All you see is drones and electronics and printers. Printing. It's like normal. It's like That's normal. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> but no, we're super impressed with this uh, $100 little drone. We'll do okay. more tests, maybe make some like Ninja Flex feet for it or something. But yeah, very awesome. You can see the yeah. little um, little GoPro type. I really here. love these type of projects that uh, really, really help you like bridge things together because I don't think they make a GoPro thing for this model. Yeah, um, so this just slides into the little slot here. You can yeah. hold that down, has a little thing to click in. Of course, you could use Velcro and all that stuff. This is really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's not really the way they go, yeah. So, pretty you know, cool. We'll release this. Um, very cool. Uh, okay. Uh, drone, can't believe the price, how it keeps they're dropping, dropping on yeah, these. Yeah. Dropping. yeah, there's uh, it's like a $15 one now you can get. Yeah, like $14, and it's pretty cool. Um, and it's a good way to fly too, so you don't have to depend on GPS and sort of, you know, yeah. learn how to stabilize. You okay. can do it all manually, sort of like learning how to drive a stick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Huh? Manual, so man, manual. Move okay. on to. It's very awesome. Yeah, so uh, Phil, Phil, this is a new collaboration project with Phil B. He mm -hmm. had an idea. Let's make a D20 dice. So that's the dice that you, you talk, typically see in like Dungeons and Dragons and other cool games like that. Um, let's make a dice that can talk, right? So, so how do you do that? Well, we have a new sensor in the Adafruit shop, and it is the BNO, BNO055. This is a nine-off sensor, very, very precise sensor, and the goal is to... Um, oh, it's talking to us already. The goal is to make a 3D printed enclosure and stuff the electronics into it and make a talking DC. So when you roll it, it'll give you... Uh, you know, it'll tell you what it's in. Right now, though, I have a I have a quick prototype um, where it's using the. Come on, stop. Okay, it has a, t uh, a tilt ball switch, so it's a very it's like the poor man's um, accelerometer sensor, yeah. sensor thing. Um, so that's hooked up to the the Adafruit um, sound effects board that has the amp built in, and it just has a, a speaker wired into it and a 500 milliamp battery. Track one. And Random it's a cool little prototype. I'm using magnets to keep the two parts together because that's the goal is to sort of have them together. And inside here is the Pro Trinket and the, 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 the sensor as well. They're not connected yet because it's just like a prototype. And Phil B is, is working on the software. Really, really cool project. Um, it really takes that, uh, that sort of game element and brings it to the like modern age, right, with like electronics. It's really, really cool. Um, and the enclosure is four pieces, so these two pieces are uh, just you know screwed into the, to the little shell here, and what this is a, uh, a polyhedron, right? So it's a twenty-sided dice, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how to how I built it. Yeah, yeah. If I can get this thing shut up, Hold on. jump into our layer by layer. No, just upside down. <laughs> it's 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 because it's a it's a tilt it's a tilt ball switch, so it's a little bit different. Okay, so let's take a look at the the layer by layer. Um, some CAD. So to put this together, I'm actually going to do a, a little bit longer tutorial. Just I just want to give you guys like a conceptual high overview of, of it. So it's assembled by putting a bunch of rectangles together. And these rectangles, um, they're, they're called golden rectangles because there's actually a formula that goes behind it and stuff. But there's a calculator on the internet. You can pull it up. So if you want 40 um, millimeters, it'll tell you exactly how, how, the, how long or how the width or the height needs to be. So 
Um, once you create your arrangement of your 2D planes, um, you want to build um, the sketches uh, to make a bunch of triangles. So this is what it's like. Um, again, I'll go over it in full detail on how to get the sketches. That's the really hard part, right? It's very sketchy. Um, but uh, you want to create uh, the series of triangles that are all like that. And the thing, though, is um, you want to uh, once, once you have them all set up, you don't have to build the whole thing. You just want to build half of it because it's symmetrical, so you only have to build half of it. And there's, if you didn't know, you can actually hide sketches by clicking on it, going over to the gear, and just hit the little eye. And it helps you a lot. I don't know if you guys knew that, but definitely, definitely use that. Uh, use it all the time. So I started off with just extruding one of the triangles. And when you extrude it, um, you can actually do a taper. So if you, if you rotate around, you look at that little handle, when you move it in and out, it sort of flanges out or, or tapers inward. And you want to do it at 45 degree angle and make sure you pull it out until it makes that sort of triangle, little pyramid. And uh, that actually looks a lot like the 123D logo up there. So once you pull that together, you have enough uh, edges or enough surfaces on, this, on, the, on the shape to start lofting between them. So that's the sort of trick that I figured out without crashing it. Right? So all you do is just loft between uh, the surface and the sketch. And you can also do it backwards. You can do it where the sketch goes to uh, the solid. So you, you just have to kind of loft in between them um, until you create that sort of polygonal shape. So um, a lot of clicking to, to get your shape. But once you get it, um, I'll actually skip here and then build the, the shape. So once you loft everything together, it's not quite finished. So what you want to do is you want to loft those, those little cavities and make sure that it's fully formed, right? And you'll know it's not working when you try to duplicate it and try to merge them together. It'll be like, er, can't do it. There's missing geometry. So what I'm doing here is just merging it to make a full thing. You can see that's the last little bit I need. And just loft that and that, just two, and it does the third one for you already. Awesome. And that's pretty much the, the half of it. So once you have half of it, you can duplicate it and rotate it and then merge it and then do some cool stuff with it. So real quick. Um, I have it actually in the middle of the, uh, of the, of the grid so I, can, uh, so I can see a little bit better. Um, you just duplicate it, just copy and paste like you would in words. I rotated it and then I moved it up by uh, 7.5 millimeters because that's how the math works out for that one. And there you go. You have your, your um, the icosahedron shape, 20-sided uh, polyhedron. So you can merge them together. And this is really cool. I was really surprised that I can grab one of the surfaces click J on my keyboard and apply a fillet, and it makes a very, very nice, clean um, fillet. Or not fillet, uh, shell. shell. Thank you. And one other thing is um, if you wanted to uh, create two halves, you can uh, do a multi-select on the surfaces. So I'm going to select these, what, four or five? And then I can do a shell here. But you want to be careful, because uh, it, it'll. I've done it where it doesn't crash, and you can do it, and you can apply a certain thickness to it. Uh, but in this case, um, I, I actually crashed 1, 2, 3D. So, so anything above 1 uh, thickness? Uh, I, no, it worked with 2. It's just that for this instance, whatever, it, I think I crashed it. So Pretty cool way to <laughs> build one you, of these. Yeah, you always want to make sure to save your, that's my tip. You always want to make sure to save before all that stuff. So um, pretty cool. I'm coming out with a, with, a, with a tutorial. I'm really trying to optimize all the steps um, to minimize them and, and figure out like how do you, how you apply this to not just this piece of software, but all types of software. Yeah, so, so um, we were figuring out, out trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, I think we were going to settle on doing this inside of Maya, because you could do this mm -hmm. easily with the Create Polygon tool. But oh, yeah. Super happy that you were able to figure this out. I think you actually found uh, somebody doing it inside of SketchUp. Yeah, so actually. So this should work yeah. in SketchUp as well. Yeah, it's a lot easier in SketchUp, actually. So. Yeah. And Inventor, so. OK. Pretty cool way to make a 20-sided uh, P20. We'll definitely P20. check that out when we release that. OK, cool. Um, next up, what, what's the next uh, part? Next up, I think we have 3D news, right? News. All right, here we go. We're doing some news, folks. This is where we um, pull up all the news. This is a really cool piece. The first piece we got, this was from Adian. All right, so yeah, he's a frequent guest on the show and tell. Oh, yeah. If you don't know about it, every Wednesday at 7.30, uh, Adafruit has a show and tell where everybody comes in, hangs out, shows pretty cool projects that they're all working on, and Adian is always there. Yeah, he's working on a lot of cool uh, soft, soft robotics. robotics. Yeah. So using 3D printing to make molds, to make uh, little bits, uh, little adapters and things, uh, to make uh, a, a movable uh, little squishy robot. I think that's really cool. So this is a really cool, he showed this last week, but now he's got it up on Thingiverse. And let me see if I can pull up the clip here. This is really cool. Here, here it is in action. So, wow, this, I'm picking this is pretty up. badass. So this is cool. This is using a continuous uh, microservo. 
Uh, and the pieces of nylon, I think, like string nylon has the tendons to make the, the little mm -hmm. arms and stuff, the little fingers, sorry, to, to, to pick stuff up. Yeah, so he's so using um, soft and rigid materials and uh, to articulate and uh, make the bending motion. Yeah, cool. Very awesome. You can see the little uh, motor around there that's actually twisting all the uh, string together mm -hmm. to create the, um, to have the little arms uh, grip. So this is very awesome. Definitely check out a lot of the other uh, soft robotics that he's been working on every mm -hmm. week. Uh, just blows us away <laughs> by um, all the progress he's making on this. Yeah. Definitely um, someone to follow. Yeah, very cool work, Adian. And thank you for that. You can download it on Thingiverse mm -hmm. and check out more of his work. And if you haven't already, check out our show and tell every Wednesday, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You'll see us there. Okay, next up. What's the next one, Pedro? Uh, same with the same theme. This is Kid Rulix. Kid Rulix. Kid Ru Kuraluik. Something like that. Kid yeah, so Ruralik. <laughs> what is so this? So it's a 3D printed open source toy. Um, so it's pretty much making like the building blocks. So you can use like pneumatics and like syringes and air pressure to create moving parts. So. Um, very timely over the weekend. We were watching a lot of like the movie magic things, oh, right, like a uh, Jurassic Park. And yeah, like how they were dinos. making puppets and things like yeah. that. So um, <laughs> coincidence. Yeah, right. <laughs> we see ADN come up with this one, and then um, Kid is cool. Yeah. So, so this, this is, cool. is like a you, you can uh, three D print these. Uh, he has them up on Thingiverse. All the little parts that you can um, quickly prototype the little arms and things like that. He's using uh, rubber bands to act as the springs. And he, you can very quickly build a little drawing arm robot like wow. he has here. So he's just using cardboard, of course, to quickly prototype these. But you can make some very cool. Um, you can make characters. You can make robots. It's it's very thinking, like ITO very cool. type things too. You know, yeah. control with uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Make little um, you know, animatronics, things like that. This I think that's cool. a failed print, and he used it like here. That's so cool. <laughs> So very cool project. Um, it's available on Thingiverse, of course, and mm -hmm. you can download it now. We got a link for you guys in the description. Very awesome work. Very cool work. Okay. Next up, we have a 3D printed uh, Bugatti. Oh man, a Bugatti? Like the whole size? <laughs> no, it's a one eighth scale. Okay. It's about uh, 570 millimeters long. It's still um, pretty big. About it's over 40. Uh, Printed parts. Oh, um, man. Not all of them need support material, but it looks real clean. It doesn't look finished, like it wasn't sanded or anything. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, printed, yeah. but it still looks really good. So they are. Uh, they modeled this inside of Blender, and they use an HBot 3D printer, which I've never heard of. Looks okay. like a Hackaday actually covered the printer. It's a uh, about 300 millimeters by 300. Well, now you know about the printer because they, yeah. this is a really cool thing. We really like it when printer manufacturers make projects or, or design specific things, and then they upload it on Thingiverse to show the quality of the printer. That is the yeah, way to do it, folks. Yeah, definitely any printer manufacturer, stop printing everybody else's stuff. Um, yeah, get some in-house design team and, and have and someone design something, something for it. Yeah. yeah, same thing with like the filament companies. Stop printing the you know the the boats. And I think that's every, what everybody's printing right now. The trend right now is to print boats. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, design something custom, up. and you know, yeah. that's what you should test your all your filaments on. I mean, that's it's pretty much what our job is when we get new filament or new printer out. Absolutely, yeah. We have to design our own things for it because you can't really trust what everybody else prints out there. So yeah, but we still do. It's definitely the way to go. Awesome, uh, I'd like to check that printer. Okay, out. so you can download this now on Thingiverse, right? Yeah, it's free all to download. of the parts are up there. Cool. A cool job on this. All right. All right. Next up. Next up, we have recycled filament. Oh, actually, no. We have the um, there we go. airtight filament delivery system, which is uh, just storage for your filament. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. Um, it's it's more about um, so the 3D printed part, right? These little 3D printed parts um, that have the little tubes here that you get your filament in there. Yeah, this is definitely um, for uh, traveling. So yeah, like going I think to the for maker traveling it makes much more sense. Yeah, doing like a I was show or say, something. Um, it's, it's more about, they're trying to make it more about like keeping it airtight, keeping it safe. You don't want moisture to get in your filament. Mm -hmm. We hear that sometimes, but on a personal note, we've been printing for three years now and you know, our filament is right here at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. We and live in Florida where it's actually really hot and humid, yeah. uh, but we, you know, we're, we're, we're in AC all the time, you know, try to keep it pretty cool. And we haven't had this kind of problem where we, we get a bad spool of filament because it's too dusty or because there's water in it. Yeah. Um, maybe we had it with nylon filament, but most of the ABS and PLA, it doesn't do that. But I think from a, like you were saying, 
from a, from a traveling standpoint, like this thing makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Especially way. if you're outdoors or something oh, yeah. like that. This That's definitely going to keep help. It, yeah. Yeah. Keep it um, nice and dry. Awesome little um, cost saving device, too. I think so, yeah. I think it's like store. a Walmart. You buy this at Walmart and it's just three painted parts. And then I think you can get the tubing as well. Yeah, but so that's pretty cool. Awesome there. Pretty cool project. Okay, next up is a pretty cool project from Refill. Okay, so Refill is a new uh, filament manufacturer. Yeah, looks like they are using old dashboards from cars, grinding it up, and then turning it into um, Recycle. usable, mm -hmm. recyclable uh, filament. Okay, so, and this is pretty accurate. Like, it goes through a lot of steps, probably more than that of recycling. And we usually see, you know, we hear the whole notion of, you know, 30% recycled, 70% new material. They're doing 100% recycled material. So this is really interesting stuff. Um, we don't have any yet, but it's available to purchase now. I think it's uh, only in Europe right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, really interesting stuff. If you folks want to check out uh, more, you know, eco-friendly uh, type material, people are working on it, and it's really nice to see. Yeah, they also have PET bottle uh, recycled mm -hmm. filament. You can kind of see it over there on the left side. Mm. Uh, just check out their website, re-filament.com. Very cool. Next up, we have... The Enable community receiving uh, over half a million dollars uh, fund from a Google Org grant, which is uh, part of their $20 million um, sort of grants that they have to focus on disabilities. And uh, 600000 of that was awarded to uh, Enable. Awesome. This is really nice to see. Um, I think I remember uh, seeing quite a few things with Adafruit and Enable. Yeah, um, so about uh, did a, hangout, a think, year or two ago, ago yeah. yeah, they did a hangout with uh, Phil and Lamar. And I, I think, think Pettis, Pettis was, was there, there too, yeah. And we're just talking about um, you know the, the whole project and everything, so definitely look that up. We'll link it in the description below. That's so awesome. So they got half a million dollars in funding. Yeah, so this is to continue the, um, you know, sort of, uh, what is it here? Maybe they could the buy more printers, yeah. more, mm -hmm. uh, more folks, more It's to further uh, advance the development yeah. and uh, of all the uh, design and things like that. There's always a new like hand design coming out. We always see oh, yeah. being posted up. Yeah. So very awesome. Very man. awesome. A uh, little cool tip. Tip off from uh, Andreas uh, uh, Bastian yep. from uh, uh, Pier 9 at Autodesk. Very cool. Thank you. All right. Um, and I think that's it for this week. This is it for this week's question or this week's uh, news. It's a joke. Yeah, Let's go, go ahead and jump, jump into, into the questions. One second here, as I get this together. All right, here we go. I don't know why we're First not there. First question yet. for this week. Okay, this one is from Mr. Bernie. Just want to tell you both, you have an awesome show here. Look forward to your future broadcast. And I wanted to thank you for your tutorials on 123D. In the last 24 hours, my design work has improved greatly. <laughs> Questions I have for you is, will, will you have more Laravel Air tutorials in the future not included in the show? Yeah, because those are more, yeah, those take a lot. Those are like five yeah, minutes tough. to 10 minutes. They can get a little bit lengthy. And what I try to do in most of them is to make it so uh, it's not boring, one thing. Like, you can get really, really boring because there's a lot of steps that go into it. So I try to pull out uh, the, some, some stuff that will sort of universal to other projects. Yeah. You can apply it to not just the project I'm working on, but more projects, and not even just the software. I, I try to make it universal so, uh, so it works in uh, different types of software. Um, but I am working on some. Uh, like this one, for example, the polyhedron one. Uh, I will have probably like a 10 minute t tutorial yeah. on, on how to put it together because it's a little bit lengthy, but I think uh, yeah, it's always we'll tough trying to, to make it. time for those. Like, yeah, because we want to. Yeah, we no we gotta, time. For <laughs> we got to do documentation. <laughs> we got to record the video. And then we got a like, lot of things in there. Yeah, I yeah. think while you're doing most of that, I'm able to do uh, some of the tutorial stuff because I just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. But I uh, it's kind have, of no, I got I got to do baby wife. Oh, I, absolutely. I gotta, yeah. <laughs> yeah. have no time. Dave does not have an excuse. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's, that's why we balance out the workload that way. Yeah. So it's very fun. But uh, thank you for the, the question. I, it definitely encourages me uh, to, 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 to put more uh, effort into it, and I, I totally am. So awesome. Thank Thanks you for there. the kind words. Oh, yeah. Next up, this one's from ADN. What's up, man? How many prototypes do you go, how, how many types do you typically go through for your projects? I'm quite aware that it will vary from project to project, uh, but I'm interested in, in uh, how many iterations you go through. Yeah, this, so, this is a good question. Yeah, I'm, I'm 20, 20 or more. 100,000, <laughs> a bucket full of, just a bucket's full. Yeah, so. It, it is dependent, but uh, maybe. With we, something we like the libretto yeah. little pie project, I mean, there's uh, five different parts on this. 
and I have to spend at least six different iterations per different part. So yeah. that adds up quite a bit, especially when, you know, uh, originally we were going to fit the battery on the bottom here. So I had, you know, finished designing all this stuff. And then when oh, yeah. it came to try to stuff everything in, we we're like, well, this should be better. This would be a lot more smaller and thinner if we just put it up here. Oh, yeah. So I had to redesign it again another six, seven, eight oh, times. Yeah. And, you know, during that process, you know, printers break, you know, Ran out of filament, things like that. So it you had a lot of tolerance problems. So you got snap-ins, you have the hinges, you have the screw hole. Yeah, a lot of different things here. Um, is there a nut in there anymore? There used to be like a nut in there. What? Like oh a, no, a, it's in there. It's in yeah, there. Yeah, I don't even there. see it anymore. Yeah, it's right here. You can kind of see um, it right there. So yeah, not that whole thing. Look, it's we'll a, go it's over a quite a bit. There's it, clearance yeah. issues, headers. Um, there's things to look out that, that, that you can't account for sometimes. You have to and, modify um, uh, components on the actual project to actually make everything fit. In my sense, I, I needed to print this out before, uh, before anything because I wanted to make sure that the form and fit was actually going to work before yeah. I actually put everything together. So uh, a lot of times you're, you're prototyping for the, the, the actual size of it and then mm -hmm. more tolerances afterwards. So quite a bit. This one is about maybe four or five different iterations. It's definitely not done because um, I don't have everything wired together yet, yeah. so I'm sure it'll change more. Maybe I'll have to make the hole a little bit bigger, but that's really the beauty of 3D printing is that it's rapid prototyping. Pro prototype fast and prototype a lot so that you can get down to that finalized product. Yeah. Um, so don't be discouraged if you, if you have like, you know, tw literally 20 garbage pieces. You're like, man, I suck at this. No, you don't. You're really good at it because you keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, word of encouragement there is, is to keep prototyping, keep iterating. That's and that's the name for of the game. every single project, at least 20 or more. Because yeah. like we said, there's, you know, at least five but, more uh, parts. But, you know, yeah, if you're worried about, though, like, uh, you know, creating so much garbage and stuff, you, 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 as you build your library of, of components and you keep reusing them, mm -hmm. you'll find uh, you can get a little bit quicker. Especially with this one, there's a lot of new stuff here. Never done this one or this one that or the is, pen. Yeah, so it's a lot all of the new projects, ground, so yeah. it really depends on the project, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well, so. I think we'll cover what I'm about to say in the next question. Oh, so. okay, cool. It's clever. All right, next question. Thank Great. you, Adrian. That was a really Excellent good question. question. I'm glad you asked that one. Next one, this one's from uh, Dan uh, from Shiny Union. Thanks for the shout out. The DOF, that's the 9 DOF sensor, got me thinking what, uh, what if you made an updated 8 ball, like for like the modern age, right? This screen could be the OLED that you used in the toaster pendant. Uh, it could be a really cool party game if you loaded like questions and answers and trivia, etc. Thanks again for the support and great video as always. This is this is pretty much like almost like this. Almost, right? almost. Yeah. We're just missing the screen. Um, this is really cool though. As an eight ball, uh, a modern eight ball, it really is a really good um, way to combine games, mechanics, mm -hmm. 3D printing, and of course programming Arduino into this very fun, usable thing. And it can. In, I, I love this that. idea. We're yeah. definitely so we're gonna bring you. this up we're at our um, weekly brand brainstorming session with the engineer. So oh, definitely yeah. uh, try to figure out a way to turn this into a project. This Absolutely. is very cool. And if you guys have more project suggestions, of course let us know. And any questions and stuff, let us know. This yeah. is the best way. Thank Excellent you, Dan, question. for that. We will definitely get working on that. It's a super fun one. Okay, next up, this one's from Jacob. So I paid through the nose to get this printed and started screwing everything in, and the standoff broke. I didn't exert any force or anything. They just broke off. Now when I get back to Thingiverse, I see comments that they, that, that, that they couldn't get the components to fit properly. Wish I'd gotten that far. Has anyone improved this design or possibility, uh, or possibly know of an off-the-shelf case that will work? Yeah, that's, that, that's painful, man. I, this has happened to me. Uh, even on the really good, uh, really good printer like the Type A machines, I've had it where it, you know it Z skips one or the, the mm -hmm. something just you know maybe the, the filament got caught and didn't get that layer. It'll happen, and that's one of the reasons why I really recommend investing into the printer. You already paid so much money to get a faulty print. Um, if you you know if if you had the printer, that wouldn't have cost you much in material. It really wouldn't have. Maybe a dollar if most. Yeah. Um, it's, it's painful to see that because, like, um, imagine if you were doing it through Shapeways and it didn't work out or broke oh, out. That's even more money, that's yeah. Even way more money. But uh, one thing I think is that the, um, you were telling me earlier, is that uh, the, the printer operators that are, you know, that are in 3D hubs or whatever. Yeah, they're pretty much used to, like, printing, like, maybe statues and things like that. So not very much functional parts. And, maybe. We um, don't know. It's because they probably have a bunch of jobs that they have to get out of the door. 
he probably you know used one shell didn't you know really figure out the proper um, slicing settings like yeah um, if you've seen a lot of our shows uh, where we spend time on talking about slicing um, it's a major part of being able to you yeah. know get a nice printable part yeah um, otherwise it's gonna path, uh, yeah a good uh, tool path yeah. um, if you don't generate it right, you're gonna have things where your standoffs break off. Yeah, it's very painful uh, uh, to hear this, um, but again, I, I definitely recommend just checking out a library a or something. Or, or like yeah, that. maybe you can, you can uh, yeah. maybe you can uh, do the monthly subscription with a, a local uh, hackerspace. Yeah, because it's definitely not design. You just heard us say, you know, it takes yeah. twenty, at least twenty different, you know designs and make yeah. sure nothing's breaking off. Right. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the, the operator's probably, you know, trying to rush these out. I mean, what are they, you know, charging, like 30 bucks, you know, for uh, a case? Yeah, I would also I mean, most, you know, most contractors make, you know, $100, $300 an hour. This is like pennies, so they, yeah. they're just trying to rush this out of there. So yeah. um, I don't think it's really worth, um, you know, trying to go to uh, an operator that's, you know, has a ton of jobs that they're trying to get out. Yeah. So um, it's definitely it's worth- it's you know, nick any of the, the operators, I'm sure there's really great operators, and that's when you really want to start considering leaving a review or starring it, give it a bad rating, and try to work with the individual so that you can maybe can give you a new part and get it sorted out. So don't just, you know, ignore it. Um, you know, let them know that they gave you a bad. That's why they have the review system. So yeah, and let them know. Yeah, unfortunately, we just can't give out the um, the what the, the, the G code the for this because everybody has different printers. They're yeah. all have different settings, different nozzles. It's just not going to work. Yeah, we don't want. I mean, it's something to crash into your bed and stuff. Yeah, happen. I mean, it's definitely one of those things where you have they the operator has to spend time and generate a correct toolpath. Yeah. So. Yeah, we feel your pain, buddy. Um, but uh, definitely consider either checking out a makerspace or leaving a review, you know, one, one of the three, try to find a middle ground. And um, yeah. uh, uh, another thing is though that uh, I, I wanted to touch on the actual part, right? So the Touch Pi, that project was optimized for the A+. And when I, uh, a lot of people were asking me, can you make it for the B+. And I was like, of course I can. So I made it, but of course I didn't print it out. I didn't print it out and test it. Um, and uh, it turns out that the battery didn't fit. And I'm glad that it's just the battery, not like the standoffs and everything around it. But Pedro's new project actually is a predecessor to this project, to the Touch Pi. It yeah, is so basically the Touch Pi project with the keyboard and uh, all the, the bells Pi and too. Yeah. yeah, and it's got audio and stuff, so it's actually a lot better. Yeah, so um, the way that I had to actually get then, if you change oh, the sure, uh, yeah. camera. So the way we got the uh, battery to fit on there, is that we actually had to bend the GPIO cables. So you just take this one, bend it this way, and it's not gonna break off. You can still um, get the power and everything. Once we release this project, you'll see exactly how this is built. Okay. This is bent this way, this is bent that way, and that's all the way down through the whole row. So these are, you know, sort of like you're combing your hair, you know, split <laughs> it down the middle, yeah. and the battery will fit right on top of there, is what they were talking about. And almost with every one of our projects, you have to modify and hack the components some way to make it fit. Sure, yeah. Um, because we're trying to get, you know, a nice slim design. We don't want everything to be so fat, but uh, it's another thing that you always have to look out for too. These are the flat pliers, right, from Haku. These are really yeah. cool ones we got in the shop. So you pick, if you don't have a pair of these, you definitely should get a pair of these. They do so much support removal, mm -hmm. bending, <laughs> bending wires. Oh, yeah. You're always gonna need this stuff, man. So, so, quick little tip on Fitting that in there. Thank you for that question, though. It's a, it's a, you know we like the the sort of tough ones to answer. That's a tough one because it's like, you know, here's some reason behind uh, why it, it didn't work out. Hopefully, put some pressure on the operators to you know generate a correct toolpath. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Jacob. Next up, this one's from Mark. I like the Astro Box and was wondering if a webcam p can be used with it. I'd like to be able to start and monitor my printer. Can this be done? That is, yep. That is, I think, one of the best um, features that uh, the Astro Box has. Yeah, so we made a whole uh, review video about the Astro Print Box. That's right. And we just roll some B-roll here. <laughs> it works. What do you know? It does it work works with the camera. Uh, with most USB cameras, it's just going to work out of the box. No configuring necessary. Mm -hmm. They're still um, working on the Pi uh, camera to yeah, get so, that working. Yeah, so the Pi camera is a little bit different. It's not a USB class camera, but uh, they're working on a workaround so that uh, they can support it. Yeah, but so definitely uh, out of the box, it will work with your webcam. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have it. We'd have it on ours, but our, our two webcams are actually uh, what they we use for the show. Now, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's it's still cool, and it's a good question. If you haven't seen the video, definitely uh, check it out. It's in our playlist. You mm -hmm. could also just uh, search just in YouTube search for AstroBox. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if you haven't already updated, they can't really update not too long ago. Yeah, it's right. UI just a little bit, it's a little bit easier changes, to use. Some stability stuff. Uh, yeah. Uploads a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. So check it out if you're if you're an AstroBox owner. Be sure to update the free updates. And if you don't have AstroBox, it is or AstroPrint. It's a free uh, Raspberry Pi image. Get it now. Just sign up and uh, you'll be on your way. Cool. Thank you for the question, Mark. Next up is the last question. This one's from The Game of Knowing. Hi, Noah and Pedro. I've been working on some enclosures for projects using Adafruit boards, and I'm spending a lot of time creating the basic board shapes that I'm using. Do you have a public collection of the widget or board shapes that you use for modeling? So a lot of the projects that we work on is for brand new components. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to design all those. Um, we used to upload these to our 123D gallery, but they started having problems with um, publishing. Publishing, yeah, that was getting it all out of whack. Yeah. So all of the parts that uh, um, we've we've just left them in all the projects that we have. So yeah. you kind of kind of have to dig through them. Right. Um, but we're gonna make an effort to start uploading uploading all these to uh, GitHub. Yeah, I think GitHub will work right now. We have all of our slicing profiles, so Cura and Simplify 3D for the printers that we actually offer. Um, we do have them up on GitHub. Um, it's actually in our buyer's guide. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we definitely want to have it on GitHub so that we can keep updating those components. And it not only is it going to help us, it's going to help you guys out. So thank you for bringing this up. This is definitely going to uh, sort of start the kickstart us to, to start doing it. Because it's, I think the other day we were like, hey, let me get that model. It's like, hold on, I got to delete all the stuff around it. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of a work, but it can, you, you know, that's how we do it. But. Yeah. Just because of how you know, we're trying to get this out. You know, mm -hmm. in a timely matter. <laughs> yeah, right. It takes a little bit of time to, you know, stop. Maybe we'll make a special video and make that dedicated project where it's like, okay, here's the GitHub, here's mm -hmm. all the boards and stuff, and some things to look out for, yeah. I think, like how to properly import it or stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What to look out. And a lot of the things, too, like the widgets, like, say, like the speaker and things like that. Um, they actually change. They change, yeah. The yeah. suppliers change. This is the old change, one. Yeah. This is the old, it, it's kind of loose. Mm -hmm. But that's so, actually better than having it too tight. So. Yeah, so yeah, an another um, our slide switch updated three times. Yeah, used to be plastic, <laughs> then it was metal, and then now it's, it's metal longer, with yeah. longer leads. Yeah. It happens, um, and that's why we we uh, you know share the original solid. So you can hit P on your keyboard and pull it out, and mm -hmm. <laughs> adjust it, yeah. see what the size changes is on it. But yeah, we go through pretty much the same thing. <laughs> we have to always update and change. But great question. That's a really good question. It puts us. Uh, uh, it gives us the initiative to like, okay, let's let's get them on the GitHubs. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. If you want your questions answered, all you gotta do is ask them in YouTube, and we'll get them together for the show. That's right. Leave them on any of the videos. We'll eventually find all of them. Yeah. I wanna leave you guys off with this week's coupon code. It is, of course, prototype. That's right. That's use, our theme. Yeah. Use prototype during checkout. Get 10% off. Um, you can get printers, filament, of course, electronics. Uh, you can't use it on software or gift certificates. All right, right. Expires 11.59 p.m. tonight. Okay. And, of course, we want to leave you off with some links. How about the Adafruit Learning System? That's right. That's where all of our projects live, step by step. All of our STL files, our um, profiles for the printers. Arduino libraries. More, looking more, more, more learning stuff. Yeah, if you're looking for a cool project to do over the weekend, just search there. We have, I forget how many we have. Yeah. There's a ton. 800 going on to 900. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then the Google Plus, of course, uh, you can check that out. We've got a lot of posts up there. You can share your work on the on the makers, artists, hackers uh, community, mm -hmm. and of course, that's where you can get access to the uh, show and tell if you want to show off your projects yep. and let Mar and Phil see it. Yep, every Wednesday at seven thirty p.m. That's right, and then uh, three D Thursday. That's right, every Thursday blog. we have a bunch of blog posts. You can get all the links in the description below and uh, just check out the site. Yeah, there's, there's some other uh, a lot blog of stories posts we can't cover that, that make it. Yeah. And then, of course, you can follow myself and Pedro and Adafruit on the various social networks. <laughs> check it out for behind the scenes of future projects. Okay, I think that's going to be it for the show, guys. All right. <laughs> Any last words, Pedro? See ya. Oh, whoops, I already <laughs> closed it out. Hold on, we're not done yet. Hold on, we gotta say bye. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be here next week. Keep on printing. Keep on printing. Keep on printing. See you guys. Bye.